Good morning, class. Today we're going to be talking about impulse. Impulse is another momentum term. Impulse actually has a clear definition. It's defined as the change in momentum. Now, impulse doesn't have its own letter or its own symbol. So, the, our symbol that we have for change is all has always been the delta symbol. And the symbol that we have for momentum is P. So change in momentum, or impulse, has the symbol of delta P. Now you might actually remember from our previous video that the, we have a formula for delta P. Delta P is going to be the final momentum subtracted by the initial momentum. And so here's one way for us to have our impulse. It's the final momentum sur subtracted by our initial momentum. Now the thing is, there's also one more way for us to find our impulse. We get this from looking at our formula for momentum. Momentum is equal to the mass multiplied by the velocity. This formula only works for velocities that are constant. What happens when I have a change in velocity? Well, if I have a change in velocity, that's going to change my momentum. And if we just remember, wait a minute, a change in velocity means an impulse. So providing an impulse is the same thing as taking the mass multiplied by a change in velocity. Now, what do we have to do when we change a velocity? Any change in velocity is going to correspond to an acceleration. Let's look at our acceleration formula and see how this relates. The acceleration of any object is going to be the rate of change of velocity. In other words, the change in velocity over a period of time. So with a little bit of reorganization, the acceleration multiplied by the time is the same thing as the change in velocity. I'm going to do a little bit of math and I'm going to substitute that in for my change in velocity right there. Let's see what this is going to mean for us. The change in momentum is equal to the mass times the acceleration times the time. So our impulse is equal to mass times acceleration times time. Now that doesn't seem to be any more interesting. If anything, that's something that we'd be able to do on our own. What's the point of that? Well, taking a moment with this, we actually might identify a relationship that we've already been familiar with. Mass times acceleration is Newton's second law. This means that this is actually measurable by forces. That you can find your change in momentum, or you can find the impulse by taking the net force on an object and multiplying that by the time that the net force is being applied to that object. So that means our change in momentum formula, our impulse formula, has two forms. The change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum, or the change in momentum can also be measured by the amount of net force being applied multiplied by the amount of time the force is being applied. There are two ways for us to go ahead and find our impulse. One last note here is that since both force and momentums are vectors, Impulse is also a vector, and it's going to be very important for us to pay attention to the directions that are occurring in any problem. So let's look at this example. A baseball bat applies a 50 newton force in the positive direction on a baseball that has 250 grams of mass for a time period of 0.1 seconds. What is the impulse acting on the ball? So if I recap my formulas, I can find my impulse by finding the final momentum and subtracting my initial momentum, or I can find my impulse by determining the amount of net force multiplied by the time. Well, let's look at what we have given what we're given in this problem. 50 newtons of force, mass, 
and time. Looking at this, I already have force and time. It'd be much easier for me to choose this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. My impulse is equal to my force multiplied by the time. And the direction is actually given as positive. So I will just be able to keep my value here as positive. 50 multiplied by 0 0.10 equals 5. Now what are the units of impulse? Impulse is simply the change in momentum. Impulse is going to maintain the same units as momentum. So our units are going to be kilogram meters per second, or you could call them newton seconds. Both units are acceptable. All right, let's take a look at the second problem. If the ball had an initial velocity of negative 5 meters per second, determine the velocity of the ball after being hit by the bat. This is a situation where we'd want to use the other form of our impulse formula. If we take a look, our impulse is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. We can break down these momentums into their formula. Final momentum would be the mass multiplied by the final velocity. And the initial momentum is going to be the mass multiplied by the initial velocity. And we can use all of the information that we were given in the problem to plug in and solve. We know that the impulse is 5 kilogram meters per second. The mass is 250 grams. Remember to convert it into kilograms. We don't know the final velocity, that's what it's being asked, but we do know for our mass and we know our initial velocity was negative 5. All this is going to take now is a little bit of calculator work. Complete your algebra. And we should find that our final velocity is going to be 15 meters per second in the positive direction. Hopefully this example here demonstrates how you can use both forms of our impulse formula to solve depending upon what values you have available. Have a good day.